Hey guys, Joe here with S3 Archery, and today I'm going to do a video that I've been wanting to do for a very long time, and one that I think applies to every single archer out there. So, what I wanted to come to you today and talk about was a video called, Why Do I Miss Left? So, no matter what your skill level, whether you're a novice, an, um, an amateur, or a professional, we've never had an archer who's gone through their entire career in archery or their entire hobby in archery and not had a problem that's crept up with them missing left. So this applies to every single archer out there and uh, it happens to me all the time and you have to battle through it and what I wanted to do today is come to you and provide a checklist, if you will, to go through and try to eliminate that issue of, of missing left. So this is not an all-inclusive video about all the fixes that you can do. Um, there's just every single archer is different but as a, um, I'm an analyst in my real life, and over half of the battle is identifying what the problem actually is. It's not actually implementing a fix or coming up with a fix. It's identifying the problem. So that's what I want to do with this video, is give you guys a bit of a checklist to go through and pinpoint why am I missing left, whether it be that day, that week, or that month. What is the problem? So I can start addressing it. So. With this video, I'm going to start off and I'm going to talk about the most obvious things first and I'm going to work my way down to the less obvious things as we go through it. And uh, as always, uh, feel free to post comments underneath this video and uh, I will give my feedback and you can give your feedback as well if I've missed anything. There's no way I can cover everything. So um, I'll just try my best. This is all based off my experience, I should say, as well. So. Um, Obviously, I've read books and whatnot, but for myself, being in archery for the past 10 years, um, most of those with compound and then for the last three years in traditional archery, I'm going to talk about the things that I've done incorrectly and the things that I've done to address that. So let's kick off the video and, uh, and we'll just see what you guys all think. So I think all you're going to find it very beneficial. So you're missing left and you're trying to figure out what the problem is. The first thing I would do is I would address the issue of concentration. Uh, and figure out is it a problem of concentration or not. So in order to do that, what I would do is I would uh, put out a, a, a bale or put out your block, turn it all one color, put some white paper over it or spray paint it, and then put one orange dot or put a black dot in the center of it. And what that's going to do is it's gonna help you, especially as an instinctive archer, concentrate on a target. There's no distraction. There's not all these different dots out there. Um, different colors. It's one dot, one color, and it'll really focus you in on that target and help you concentrate. So with instinctive archery, unlike a reference system, you need to create a connection with your target. You have to link up with it. I'm going to call it that. And as you're pulling back, you can never break concentration with that target. So if you're shooting at 3D targets or, or posters with all sorts of colors and things on it, your eye can begin to wander a little bit. So you're looking at what you want to hit for a second, but then your eye breaks contact and you try to get back with it, but it's too late. Once you've broken that link, you can't build it again until you let down and you start over from scratch. So think about your concentration. Um, try to get rid of all distractions besides one dot. Um, the best way of doing that, like I said, get a blank colored bale, put a, an orange or black sticker out there, shoot one arrow at a time, and if uh, you're still shooting left, it's probably not an issue of concentration. It's probably something different, so then we just keep moving on. So let's move on to number two then. What's the next thing that I would do after concentration to then eliminate as a possibility? I would, um, <laughs> this will be the most controversial thing in this video, but I would look at your stance. So as an instinctive archer, we're told all the time that you wanna have a very open stance because it helps you gauge distance because you have both eyes on the target and uh, it shortens you up a little bit but uh, it really helps with that yard estimation as an instinctive archer but the problem is when you are very open to the target you create this V with your with your frame and when the shot goes off everything wants to recoil back to the left and get back to that T that we're used to so what I would propose is if you set up like this and you shoot and you put your arm straight out to the side, see how it's aiming way 45 degrees over to the left, turn your hips over and get them pointing much closer to being straight at the target. 
easiest way to do that is move your feet. Like, stop being so open. Get your feet more in line with the target, and then when you lift your arms up, you'll find you're much closer to being straight in line. And when that shot goes off, it recoils less to the left because you're already in, in alignment. Your body is already kind of maxed out. It doesn't want to go much further to the left. So I know a lot of people who watch Olympic recurve shooting, everybody in Olympic recurve shooting is going to a very open stance. And then what they end up doing is they don't shoot like this. They'll end up actually turning their hips and they shoot in perfect alignment as if you were perpendicular to the target but they've maximized their hip turn. So there's very little chance of them missing to the right. That's why they do that. It, it helps them lock up their body, if you will. But if you're not practicing that for hundreds, if not thousands of shots a day, uh, if you're just a hobbyist and you're just doing this for fun, you're never gonna become consistent with that form. So um, not saying you have to get rid of your open stance, just minimize your open stance or start reducing it a little bit at a time and see if that helps bring your arrows back to the right. So um, that was number two. Next thing I want to talk about was the grip of the bow. So if you're somebody and you're going back and forth, you're going between long bows and recurves, a recurve grip wants to get your hand into the throat of the grip a little bit more. And when you go to a long bow, most long bows want to be more of a straight wrist. So if I put my finger out or my hand out like this, it wants to be more like this where you wrap your fingers around the grip and you have a very flat wrist. Whereas with a recurve, it's gonna want you to bend your wrist in into the throat of the grip. So now it looks more like this. So if you've been shooting a recurve for a long time and you're used to this grip, and then you go to a longbow, that requires more of a flat wristed grip, but you have around the throat. What ends up happening is when that shot goes off, the bow ricochets, it recoils to the left, and it happens so fast that it's gonna actually induce some left into your arrow and you'll miss left a lot and you'll get more sporadic in your shooting. So I would recommend taking that grip and trying to rotate, get that hand rotated around and get more on the side of the grip instead of behind the grip. And you'll find that that arrow will move over to the right. So that's tip number three. Next thing I wanted to talk about was uh, torquing the string. So I did a video about a year ago and it was about canting the bow and you'll see a lot of traditional archers who have a very upright spine angle, but then their bow is canted at 40, 45 degrees, if not more. And uh, while it's very hard to torque a longbow, it's gonna fight it with a recurve. You're thinking that you're getting away with it. It allows you to do it. But in reality, what's happening is your limb tips are being torqued and there's a bend in them. And when the shot goes off, the tips um, recoil and they spit the arrow to the left. So a lot of those left misses are because you're torquing the string. Your string angle is more upright than the bow angle. So what I would propose is going out there and making sure that your spine angle is the exact same angle as your bow. And in that video um, that I posted about a year ago, what I would do is stand perfectly upright, get your bow perfectly upright, and then bend your spine angle to how you're comfortable and just let the cant of the bow turn with your spine. Don't move it with your wrist. So find what spine angle is comfortable for you and let the bow angle be whatever your spine angle is. And I think that'll really help you in eliminating those laughs. Next thing I want to talk about was um, equipment changes and more particularly arrow changes. So if you're somebody who has been shooting thin arrows for a very long time. I'm thinking like Eastern Axis traditionals, those are 932nd inch arrows, or gold tip traditional arrows, those are 516ths. And you're going to an 1132nd or a 2364th cedar arrow, or a big thick aluminum arrow. Just the, the physics behind that, the arrow, because it's getting thicker, it's actually pointing more to the left. So the, the end result is gonna be your arrow is gonna hit to the left of where your condition for it to go. So if you've done the equipment change recently to a thinner arrow or to a bow that shelf isn't as cut to center as your previous bow, be aware of that and know that you are going to miss left and it's just a matter of putting in the time with that new equipment to bring things back to the right again. And even though um, this is going to seem like the most obvious tip in the entire video, 
and one that should have been placed at the very beginning as the most obvious i think it's the hardest to diagnose and the final thing that i would consider is fatigue so each one of us archers we love to do archery that's that's why we're doing it is we just love to shoot and fling arrows and what happens a lot of times for archers i believe is you get in your head that i'm going to shoot archery for two or three hours today and you just shoot over and over again and at the beginning of the day you'll be shooting great we've all done this before you're shooting great you're hitting everything that you're aiming at you're having a, just a banner day and as the day goes on you start to fade you get fatigued you get tired and your form changes because you're tired and you begin missing a lot whether it be a ton to the left a ton to the right um, missing high low um, you start to think that it's your form and it is your form but it's not because you have bad form it's because you're fatigued out and uh, the biggest issue that I see with becoming fatigued is getting in alignment um, pulling back far enough I'll say so if you have a short draw let's say that if I'm shooting at the camera in a normal day when I'm shooting I pull back and I look like this my my right hand my string hand gets in alignment with the target I shoot and everything is in alignment as I get more and more fatigued and I get shorter and shorter you can see my right elbow coming around and the more that my right elbow comes around the side of the target the more that when I pull the bow to put a little back tension into the string before I shoot it the more I'm pulling to the right and that pulling the string to the right makes the arrow go to the left of course so make sure you watch yourself that's why I believe things like the cricket exist is to basically identify you're getting shorter you're not pulling back far enough so um, you can buy a cricket if you have this problem of fatiguing out or make sure you put a black line at your draw length on your arrow shaft and if you shoot with friends a lot have your friends take a look and if you're you know a half inch an inch two inches shorter than your usually than your usual draw length I think it's a really good time to maybe take a break come back a couple hours later and shoot a couple shots or maybe take a break for the day I mean we're human beings we're gonna get tired we're gonna fatigue out and you just have to recognize that and uh, I think it's much better to have very good practice and be conditioning your brain good things <laughs> good thoughts seeing it hit the target a lot than just trying to fight through it and uh, deteriorate basically as the day goes on and condition yourself that you're not good at archery and be missing all the time and I think it's gonna adversely affect you so I just wouldn't do that so keep in mind that fatigue exists and uh, maybe stop at some point so those are really my tips and tricks uh, for trying to avoid missing left uh, I hope you find it beneficial um, if you find yourself missing left today or tomorrow or the next week um, or any time um, try to go through that checklist in that order and I really think it's going to help you shoot much straighter get a lot more uh, X's or hit a lot more spots and enjoy archery a lot lot more so hopefully that's helped till next time shoot straight and thanks for tuning in